Section 24 of Birds and Nature, Volume 10, Number 4, November 1901. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. In the Hollow of His Hand, from an Ornithologist's Yearbook. So tiny that a child's small palm can cover its whole body, inaudible at a few paces' distance, invisible till it rises at your very feet. Such is our yellow winged sparrow yet he is a marvel his plumage shows an exquisite mimicry of the earth tints the upper parts mix black rufous brown ashy and cream buff with a touch of yellowish olive green for the herbage and here and there an orange or yellow shade and a dusky whiteness beneath to give the effect of light what could be more perfect no wonder the wee householders with a nest of fine woven grasses low upon the ground sits unseen on her clutch of wee speckled eggs within reach of your fingers she knows this well and will not rise until you are almost upon her retreat nor will she fly far a fence post a low shrub will serve as her watch-tower until the danger is over our yellow-tinted sparrow has another name the grasshopper sparrow from its insect-like tremolo and chirp its song is a chord or two and a long trill on the insect letter z it is sung to the eye with a hearty abandon of joy the head thrown back and mouth open in a fine pose of ecstasy yet unless all around is still and you listen with attention not a sound will you hear so small and fine are the vibrating tones it is said in the story of the highlands that on certain nights if a man will but lay a cushioned ear close to the breast of the earth he may hear the fine fine piping of the fairy tunes played in the underworld our bird's song is one of these faint sweet voices of the earth like the music that breathes from every clod or leaf when the old world lies dreaming and dozing in a bit of holiday after work is done on a warm sunny afternoon in autumn a musical tremulous sweet piping everywhere yet not one of these small creatures is forgotten before its father when the frost is in the air and winter is near the divine impulse stirs in its breast and its little wings will bear it far far away in the long mysterious journey over the sea to the warm islands of the atlantic there it will sing for joy with its fellows in the sun but when april returns look well is there not a stir in the short grass and listen the faint dreamlike thrill throbs again in the throat of the sparrow and our ground dweller has returned it is a parable of god's care for his little ones elia f mosby in the section twenty four this recording is in the public domain Section 25 of Birds and Nature, Volume 10, Number 4, November 1901. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Song of the Stormy Petrel When in the hollow of his hand, all calm doth lie the deep. Alone and out of sight of land, upon the wave I sleep. Above the sun resplendent shines beneath old ocean heaves i feel alike the smile of heaven and some great heart that grieves i drift afar by sun and star i care not where i be so long as throbs the giant flood of ocean under me the ancient sea my brother is and well i know his moods for everywhere with him i fare throughout his solitudes i lay my heart unto his heart I soothe him with my wing. I kiss the tide as I were bride, and to him low I sing. He speaks to me of mystery, of days when he was young, of sorrows old, of tales untold by any other tongue. I listen, yearn, and much I learn of nations now no more, of wrecks that sleep down in the deep or strew the rocky shore, of how grim time makes him to mar whatever coast he laves of how the sea he makes to be so full of nameless graves since goaded long by lashing winds 
he rushes forth in ire and welds as one the ships of clyde with those of crumpled tire and swallows down the king and clown with equal appetite and hides them all both great and small in his wide tombs of night then screaming i above him fly and hasten where he roars within my breast the same unrest as his proud bosom gores a thousand leagues i go with him in glory in his power a thousand leagues i herald him through many a sleepless hour then calmer grown we dream again and in some distant zone a little season are as one untroubled and alone for i am brother to the sea and where he goes go i and when at last my days are past within his breast i lie and i shall ever haunt his paths about the saging earth and he to me and i to him shall sing of woe and mirth until gray time shall be no more and every wave that weeps has learned to laugh and laughing thrills the bosom of the deeps c g b in the chicago record end of section twenty five this recording is in the public domain section twenty six of birds and nature volume ten number four november nineteen hundred and one this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Tavarish. The Spider Monkey, Ateles Hippoxanthus. With his native guides, a gentleman was traveling one day through one of the wonderfully luxuriant tropical forests of eastern Brazil. They had left the Amazon River and had come southeast to the province of Maranhão where the roots grasses and plants sometimes weave themselves into vegetable bridges so solid that a man may go some distance without discovering that he has left the firm earth they had just passed over one of these natural bridges and had evidently reached the edge of the hidden pool as they came to a dense growth of rosewood trees and there they saw a most unique and peculiar sight the gentleman being a stranger in brazil exclaimed with astonishment for hanging from the branches by their tails only were a whole troop of monkeys they were of slender build with long thin sprawling limbs and small heads and they were indeed a most laughable and comical sight as soon as the gentleman recovered from his surprise he fired upon the troop and succeeded in slightly wounding one which so maimed it that uttering a loud yell it fell to the ground and he was able to secure it the others frightened quickly vanished for their movements were of surprising agility they threw their long limbs about in the queerest sort of manner using their tails in climbing more than their limbs seeming to feel their way with the tip of the tail and finding a place for support they swung themselves rapidly to the extreme treetops and were out of sight in less time than it takes to describe their flight when the troop could no longer be seen the gentleman examined his wounded captive and from what he knew of the characteristics of the ape family to which all monkeys belong he decided that without question he had secured a specimen of the spider monkey it was a young mother and the baby monkey was clinging to her with its little arms around her neck and legs around her hips in a way not to impede her motions she was carefully examined by her captor and he soon decided that the wound was not dangerous and that with care he might be able to take her with her baby back with him to the united states so she now received the best of care she was secured with a rope attached to a bit of silken handkerchief which was carefully fitted to her leg and soon recovering for her captor was a skilful surgeon she became the pet of the company in length she was about four feet four inches 
and she was covered with a dull yellowish woolly fur her face was quite brown which proved that she was still young for the face grows dark gray in old age in examining the forepaw in order to find a thumb nothing was there except a short stub devoid of a nail her nose was broad and flat and she had thirty-six teeth surely she was a miriki spider monkey and a fine specimen at that but as this variety is usually found only farther south in brazil her captor was especially pleased to secure her it would take a long time to narrate all the interesting things which one could say about her but i must tell you what a devoted and lovely mother she was to her helpless little baby it was as funny a little thing as you can imagine ugly as possible with proportionately long arms and legs and a face so old-looking and wrinkled that it reminded one of an antiquated grandfather rather than of an infant monkey she would continually pet this little monster lick its body hug it and fondle it she would hold it in both hands as if admiring it and then would rock it to sleep in her arms the children of royalty could not have more tender care and attention than the little brazilian monkey gave her offspring as it grew she allowed it a little freedom and usually it was very docile obeying her every call but when disobedient she would slap it and give it a box on the ear but this seldom happened for a monkey child is a model child and might serve as an example to many human children but i think you would have found it extremely odd could you have seen her eat she would frequently take fruit or anything offered with her long prehensile tail and curling the end around the object would convey it to her mouth she would eat almost everything eaten by her captors but would not reject an occasional insect spider or even a young bird happiest when permitted to hang on the tree boughs she would drink from the overhanging branches without touching the ground in fact she was only perfectly at home when climbing around the trees as she was comparatively awkward when on the ground walking on all fours in a somewhat clumsy manner like all spider monkeys she was of a gentle teachable disposition for all south american monkeys lack many of the mischievous and disagreeable traits of their african cousins though as a rule they are not as bright and vivid in color and are duller and more indolent in their nature on the other hand the american monkeys do little damage to man for the vast forests which form their home they are found in the warm countries of mexico central and south america and never in a very high altitude provide for them so fully that they have no need of man's help the natives depend very much on monkey meat as a food and hunt them with bow and arrows while travellers are often obliged to subsist upon monkey roasts for weeks together and do not find them very bad fare aside from the miriki spider monkey of which our little mother was so interesting a specimen the travelling party from time to time encountered other species of the spider monkey of which there are many all have similar characteristics but vary somewhat in size and colour you will be interested to know that the monkey mother and her funny baby were finally brought in safety to the united states where as far as i know they are still living and are happy and much treasured pets john ainsley end of section twenty six Section twenty seven of Birds and Nature, Volume ten, number four, November nineteen hundred and one. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. November. Though I sorrow it to say 
November is a churl away. Miserly beside the fire, just outside the echoing choir, sits he peevishly and ponders on this life and all its wonders, hearing through the grudging screen organ notes that slip between prayers for dead men and dead hopes, while the priests, embroidered copes, sing to heaven. Yet not for him goes up the incense or the hymn. Fi November Walter Thornbury, The Twelve Brothers End of section 27 This recording is in the public domain. End of Birds and Nature, Volume 10, Number 4, November 1901